Hi, Bookaholics. This is Deirdre Pippins. And today we have a special guest, Dave Cole, who is the author of the Math Kids series. This is a perfect series of books that surround kids solving problems. Some are mysteries, some are kind of sort of mysteries, but always it involves the kids using math to solve the problems. This is perfect reading for people who are in the fourth, fifth, sixth grades. It's very educational, very informative, and also very fun. So let's talk to Dave about his books, the Math Kids series, after this. Hi, Dave. How's it going? It is going great. It's a, it's a great pleasure to uh, talk with you this morning. Yes, I'm looking forward to it. So I think parents will be so happy to hear about this information. Now, before we dive into what that information is, um, well, I'll say it like this. You've written a series of books called The Math Kids, correct? That's right. That's right. Okay. All right. And it's not necessarily them solving math problems or saying introducing them into division or fractions, but it's more like a series of books to read, but they use math to solve mysteries and that type of thing, right? Exactly. So I want it to be fun for kids to read. And if a little math kind of sneaks into their head while they're reading, great. So uh, <laughs> kids who, who love math, I think we'll, we'll love the books, but I've also found kids that aren't as interested in math said, hmm, I'm a little bit more interested in math now because I don't, um, you know, they get to solve some, some mysteries in there, but it's not getting, getting beat over the head with the math side of it. Got you. Got you. Now, so let's get back to your experiences. It sounds like you definitely have been a very mathy, sciencey guy in your career, um, way above probably most people's heads. So I'm assuming that's kind of, you do love math. I do, I do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> and tell us a little bit about, about your background. Um, so yeah, I've always been in kind of a technical field, um, a computer science degree, mechanical engineering, math, all of those kind of uh, things. So it's always been been technical, but, but I've also loved the writing side of things as well. So I've always kind of written and plays and short stories and won some short story contests and, and uh, things. Um, somewhere along the lines, I said, you know, let's let's see if we can take some of this stuff that I know about math, the fun stuff. Right. And let's try to get that to kids. So I started running these elementary math camps in the summertime. And um, it was funny. The first year I asked and I had about 40 kids. And I okay. said, how many are you, how many of you are here because your parents made you? Pretty much 40 hands. Uh, yes. <laughs> and uh, I said, well, then I want to change your mind this week. And we did a lot of fun math games. I told stories that had um, math involved with that. And the next year I had about 75 kids in the camp. Oh. And I said, how many are here because your parents made you? And I got most of the 40 back from the previous year. And so it was just the next 35 by the third year, we were we were completely selling out. I couldn't take any more any more people. I had hired helpers and everything else. And it was just because it, we made math fun, and that's what wow. I what I tried to do with this book series as well. Wow, wow! You know, uh, it's very interesting. This group of young people that you had. First of all, do you still do that camp? I I well, I haven't the last couple of years because of uh, COVID, but uh, right. I believe we're going to do it again. We're going to do it again this summer. I also coach some uh, math teams, uh, elementary school math teams. Um, there's some some competition, so I help coach that through the schools, which is also a lot of fun. Wow. Well, I certainly wish you would have been around when I was a little kid because I absolutely positively hated math. And therefore, I mean, I literally ran away from math in college. You know, I, I went into journalism, um, 
English and all of these things. I mean, I was busy skirting <laughs> myself away from math. I, I couldn't stand it. It just was not my cup of tea. I couldn't grasp it. But oddly and strangely enough, uh, once my husband and I started our healthcare business, of course, I had to be into math. I had to be into the business math. Um, you know, so, you know, I had to learn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and that's part of what I try to bring out in these books is that there's math all around us all the time. We don't sure. maybe know we're using it, but even shopping, you know, trying to find the best bargain and trying to find the best deal or um, you know, reading something in the paper and and you'll read something about, oh, at this um, you know, New Year's Eve, uh, there were a million people. And you start looking at that going, the math doesn't add up. There's not a million people there. There's 25,000 people there. But right. all these things we get bombarded with all the time, we just don't know we're, we're doing it. Yes, that is a great point. Now, speaking of that, uh, in even a more practical format of math than be, uh, than algebra or something that people literally say, oh, I'm not going to use this algebra, um, is the practical side of math, which you were just talking about. You know, what do you think about schools and teaching more practical sides of math? I'm saying like in high school, practical in elementary with addition and subtraction, that's what you think of as practical, but taxes, knowing stuff about, um, you know, just math that will help you on a daily basis, budgets, planning for the future, saving and all of this type of thing. Um, you know, have you ever thought about rallying to your particular state of getting more practical math in a high school, for example? Yeah, ab absolutely. And and we need that because yes. uh, personal finance, I, you know, if, if right. kids could understand that if I put a dollar aside when I'm 20 years old, what that dollar will look like when I'm 50 years old right. and understand and, and, and see the math behind it and, and say, wow, that can really grow. Just learning that simple lesson can really change people's lives. Yeah. Um, knowing how to budget and, you know, I have this many dollars coming in. I can't have that many dollars, more than that many dollars going out, or I'm going to run into into problems. And and you're right, taxes and yes. uh, all of these all these different areas. Uh, we have to start practical in math because you have to know how to add and subtract and and things like sure. that. And then somewhere in the middle, we get abstract when you get into trigonometry and algebra and yes. some other things, calculus. But we need to bring that back home again and and back to the practical side, so we know what we're what we're doing with the math. Most definitely. And one of the, the really um, p places where you can really make a huge misstep in your personal life with finances, with math, is that a lot of times people will get their first credit card once they go to college. You know, the parents think, well, this is a good time for you to have this as an emergency and all of these type of things. And then, you know, you run into problems and then people don't know you have to pay what, you know, way beyond the minimum payment. You know, they'll get a bill and say, minimum payment, $40. And you're like, oh, wow. And then next thing you know, you're, that debt is just multiplying and multiplying and people don't know. Nobody really tells them pay more than the minimum payment or pay it off. Right. You know, like don't spend any more than you can. And so if you run up a one hundred dollar bill, just a news a number on your credit card, pay that one hundred dollars off at the end of the month. Nobody really tells kids that. And then they get into this uh, whole scenario and then they might not have a good job or a job after college. And the next thing you know, you've got a bad credit score. Right. Ab absolutely. It's the old joke about how can I be out of money? I still have checks. Um, <laughs> you know, so what's up with that? Um, yeah. Actually, introducing credit cards earlier, even for, for kids with a very low limit. I know when I first got out of college, I was worried about overspending. So uh -huh. I would, I, you know, I'd have some money in my credit card. And the very first thing they do is they raise your credit limit. Yes. I would call them up and say, no, I want it to stay where it is. I yes. don't want that limit to to raise until I think I've got a handle on this. Um, and for a long time, we've been paying off at the end of every month. And that way, yes. it's something I don't need to worry about. Not everybody can do that. But no. Learn the no. budget and just see how all that works. And again, just like putting a dollar in the savings, seeing what that looks like in 50 years, put a dollar in an 18% credit card, see what that looks like in five years. 
Yeah. You just see what uh, what harm can come to you if you're not taking a look at those numbers. Exactly. Exactly. I just think that at least if it's not an entire, say, um, class on personal finance, giving kids at least an opportunity online or something to teach them all of these things that can really trip you up into having a, a kind of unhappy adulthood. If your money is not right, you know, if it's tripped you up, math math has tripped you up with your personal finances, then, you know, you, you kind of toast. It makes for bad relationships. You know, right. you can't really get married. A friend of mine just recently posted, I think maybe somebody's in her family is getting married. And she alluded to people a lot of times don't talk about these important issues, one being finances. I mean, you know, finances and going back math has a lot to do with having a possibly a successful relationship even that you know as well yeah absolutely money can't buy happiness but lack of money can can bring a lot of sadness <laughs> most definitely most definitely now let's go back to the math series books for kids how did you what attracted you to want to write books for kids um and not maybe do something more of doing uh, books for adults to tell teach them about fine of uh, math rather not finances necessarily but math what what did you why did you go that route for children as opposed to say adults and finances yeah it's 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 a great question because i didn't start off to write kids books i really okay. started off i was gonna write a book about how to run a math camp or how to okay. run a summer camp and what i started to do is say you know it's important to to incorporate stories and games and and things like that into the into the whole picture. Right. So I started to write some examples of of that, and I had a shorter story in there. And I said, "Well, I need to lengthen this a little bit." And then I was about halfway through a book, going, well, "I'm not writing about math camp anymore. I'm writing a book." So I yeah. said, "Well, I might as well finish it." So I did that, uh, and that was fun. And so I wrote another one, and then I wrote okay. a third. I didn't do anything with them. They were just sitting on my computer. A oh. colleague at work said, you should try to get them published. Right. Said, well, okay, I guess I can do that. Mm -hmm. And one of the first publishers I reached out to said, uh, and I sent them book one, they said, oh, this is interesting. We'd like to see book two. And then oh. I sent them book three, and they sent me a contract for the first three books. And then there were another three books, and then there were another three books after that. So, um, and now that we're talking about you know, maybe books 10 through 12 as well. So uh, it just kind of grew. Uh, and, I, and I was just looking back through the books this morning. And my first one was about 100 pages long. Okay. And um, the, the next or the last one that just came out is 189 pages. So somewhere along the lines, they've kind of grown. Uh, it's fun writing a series because it's the same kids, but, but they're growing yeah. in age, they're maturing. Yeah. You're learning more about their backstories and and things like that. So you could pick up any of the books, read them individually. I've had some people read just book five and go, oh, OK. Um, but if you kind of take it from the beginning, you you kind of see how they how they are changing over over time. Wow. How interesting is that? So then let me ask you, OK, so let's go to book one. OK, book one. How old are the children in book one? Uh, they start in fourth grade. So they're in fourth grade, I think, the first uh, four books. So it kind of takes them through okay. fourth grade. Now they've advanced to fifth grade. And the book I just finished, um, just sent to the editor, book eight, which won't be out for a year. But uh, they're now, uh, it's the summer between fifth and sixth grade. So so they're now going to be moving into uh, into sixth grade. Okay, so right, so the the bulk of it is kind of middle elementary or right. la latter elementary school, uh, and then really now they're going to be starting to move into middle school. Right, right, okay. which is going to be uh, interesting because you can change, you can change the math in in the background. Every book's got kind of a math theme. The first book was called the Prime Time Burglars, and we talk about prime numbers. Right. So that was uh, kind of how they end up solving the mystery is is learning about prime numbers and uh, what the burglars were trying to do. And uh, um, so I could move up into more advanced math as I as I go along. The kids are getting older, so yeah. relationships yeah, yeah, yeah. can change and 
uh, yes. some things like that. Wow. Okay. So the prime. So are they all mysteries? Because they guess- are. No, 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 not actually. They they do solve problems. Sometimes the problems are okay. a personal problem. There's a bully in the school, and and how do we deal with that? Uh, one of the books uh, will be out. I, believe in October of this year okay. uh, is is really more um, uh, personal relationships but be- between the, the kids and um, and then some of them uh, the one that just came out there's an international um, mystery and involves oh. the FBI and, uh, and all kinds of things a book I just finished there in London for summer vacation and start um, there are some terrorist threats being phoned into um, uh, these London landmarks, right? So okay. Westminster and, and Buckingham Palace and so on. So they get involved with, with Scotland Yard and helping them solve that mystery. So, um, you know, it's all kind of basic math and, and logic and, and how the kids see things a little differently from their, their age that kind of helps the adults sometimes uh, look a different way. Yes. Okay. So... All right, so I'm very fascinated by this whole thing. So how many kids are involved in this? So I started with three kids, and they're named, they're named uh, Justin and Stephanie and Jordan, which coincidentally are the names of my three children. Um, so I'm, I was never good with names, so I named them after that. I'm still in trouble with my youngest son, Justin, because he's a little bit shorter, a um, little heavier set. Uh, kid and and actually my son is tall and thin and so he's still giving me trouble about that I you made me the little short fat kid I said I didn't make you anything I just <laughs> the names just happen to be in there so my daughter I have uh, two sons and a daughter my daughter said you can't just have one girl in the book um, okay. because that's just all kinds of rules so I introduced uh, a fourth character okay. in um, the second book and she Catherine's been been there then from from that point on. So, so like, Catherine, I'm sorry, I like what did you say? Uh Catherine, so there's two boys and two girls now. So my daughter is is at peace. Okay, right. Now, did Catherine move in? Did she move from another place and join their school? Uh actually, Stephanie was new to the school in the first book. Oh. Catherine was just a very quiet girl, always kind of sat in the back, and they were able to kind of draw her out. They needed a fourth person for this math competition they were going to be in. And oh. uh, so they kind of brought her out. And, and you've kind of seen her grown over the uh, book. She's much more assertive than she used to be. Uh, her dad's a math professor, so he gets involved in the books. And sometimes that's how we can we can introduce some of the math is, is through her dad. Oh, wow. Wow, this is fascinating. Now, you say in the newest book, it's an international uh, theme. So these kids are so close, they go on vacation together? They actually, uh, the, the um, book six, the, the international intrigue kind of comes to them. So book eight, oh. uh, the one I just finished was the first time they've been out of the country. So, okay. uh, and um, there's a little backstory behind that on why they're there. Uh, two of the parents work together and were going over to London on kind of a sales trip. And they decided they would bring the kids along. So that's um, how they ended up over in over in London. Got you. Got you. Very understandable. Well, where do you see this series as going? Do you see them going all the way off to college? How do you see this uh, concluding? You know, it's interesting. I look at uh, and please no comparison here. I, uh, you know, my 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 kids. um um, you know, my daughter grew up reading Harry Potter and, you know, he was 11 years old and she was about that same age. And then she, she read them through, you know, and they, they aged and, and the books certainly got darker and thicker and, and all kinds of things. Uh, right. don't see myself in that same category, but I could certainly see them going through maybe a middle school, uh, kind of thing. I could see probably, uh, 17 or 18 books in that series, I think. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Are you familiar with the Magic Treehouse series? Oh, yeah. And this Magic Treehouse was in the back of my mind when I uh, when I wrote that. My kids read those when they were were younger, so I read them along with them. And um, yeah, it's it's like that, right? It's it's yes. um, a similar, a little bit. They're a little bit uh, for a little bit older kids and a little bit 
um, more on the math side than some of the science and and uh, and things. But no, those what a great series! Uh, it was yes, great to yes. introduce kids into a lot of different topics. Yes, my oldest son is twenty four. And I remember us, I don't know how we discovered the Magic Treehouse series. I guess maybe just simply maybe going into a bookstore and seeing them. Um, but we started with book one and he possibly went up to book, I don't know, maybe 80. I mean, there was a, there's tons of books in that series. Oh, absolutely. The whole uh, Candlelot series part of it. And then, the, yeah, oh, it was, yeah, an amazing yeah. series. So I, I look at these books and somebody asked me to describe them. I say, uh, Magic Treehouse should definitely influence uh, Nancy Drew yeah. and Hardy Boys on the mystery yeah. side of things. Yes. Um, I would I would definitely put those uh, kind of in there as well. And the old Encyclopedia Brown books where oh, um, yes. they report little mysteries. Yes. So as part of the books, uh, what I incorporate is sometimes they end up solving a, a, a puzzle, just a shorter puzzle. And they kind of work through how they do it. But there's always a spot in there where there's a, even a little thing saying stop. If you want to solve this on your own, this is a good time to do it because, spoiler alert, they're going to solve it here coming up. So yeah. it gives them a, uh, a chance to solve some of the puzzles on their own. Um, and then also to learn kind of a strategy. How would you solve a puzzle like that? So um, it, it's done in conversations and and they say, oh, a chart would work really well here. So it can be a little educational on how to solve things like that, but also fun at the same time. Wow. Yes. Sounds really good. And just thinking about some of those old books that my son used to read, and then I'm, I'm meshing all of this in together because I think this is a wonderful series of wonderful new series that uh, both parents and children can get into uh, with your math series. And and I, I wanted to tell you before we you started talking about Harry Potter, I I see this as a TV show easily. I could see this easily on PBS. I could see this easily on, you know, any other type of station that wants to gear to parents and children and quality TV programming and even movies. So I say keep writing the meds. Here. Yeah, yeah. I actually had uh, someone approach me about that, that uh, same kind of thing saying it would be, they thought it would be a great, like a PBS series or, or yeah. something that, which was, which was very flattering. Uh, yep. I had a teacher that contacted me and she said, we use these in my classroom. And she said, we, oh. we read through the stories. When we get to a puzzle, we divide up into teams and, and they go and, and work on trying to solve the puzzle. And I said, that's, you know, that's perfect. It's a great way to do it. Every one of the books comes with a teacher guide uh, as oh. well. I kind of saw, you know, this would be great for classroom sets and, and things like that. So, um, yeah. And, and when I get responses from kids, that's always... Uh, that's always the best. Uh, I had wow. uh, one kid was 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 sending me a review of every book, and I could tell how much I liked it by the number of exclamation points. And he said, <laughs> this book is really good. Three exclamation points. This book was really great. Seventeen exclamation points. So, you know, wow, seventeen exclamation points. That's got to be good. You're a hit. <laughs> you are a superstar. <laughs> wow, that's extremely flattering. I just love it. I just feel gushy inside because I was like, oh, I would, I would almost love to have a little kid, but I don't have any more little kids. I don't have any grandkids. So, so, but yeah, it sounds wonderful. And you know, it's perfect that we're interviewing right now because with school soon coming to a close for this year, um, this is a great series for kids to, to read during the summer, stay on top of their reading. Uh, and then also it's got math and then so that, so that they don't fall behind. You can really fall behind in the two to three months that school is out. Absolutely. Just brain atrophy. They're just not doing anything but playing outside. But, uh, you know, and hopefully this is, you know, they were designed to first be a fun read, right? Because reading is important. Um, I, I'm a voracious reader and I always have been. Uh, but if you can, like I say, sneak a little math in there uh, on there. And we talk about some other topics. There's some science stuff that comes up. Every book comes with an appendix if you uh, okay. want to learn more. about. So if I talk about the seven wonders of the world. I'll have a little something at the end talking about uh, a little bit more in depth on uh, on that, or some of the math and uh, some of the mathematicians. Um, some of the I had one book where I was really focused on female mathematicians and 
you yeah. know, you could read more uh, about that. And uh, so, yeah, so hopefully learn a little bit, enjoy while you're doing it. Yes, it sounds wonderful. Well, Dave, I really appreciate you joining me the, today and talking about the math, the, the math kids series. Correct. Yes. Okay. I was going to just say the math series, but the math kids series. Uh, and hopefully um, people, parents will go out and buy this and their children will want to read this. It just sounds very interesting and informative and educational all at once. What parent, what could a parent ask for? <laughs> it's the best, the best of all words. If you, uh, if, if people are interested, I, I do have a uh, website for the books called it's the math kids.com. You can check out each book. You can read the first chapter. Uh, you can read synopsis, reviews, uh, things like that. You can order directly from there. We'll take you over to Amazon and, and uh, books, but you can uh, learn a little bit more. And, uh, um, you know, if I do podcasts or something like that, I put links to that in there so people can can hear more as well. Most definitely. And you can find Dave's information if you're listening to a podcast. His information will be down below in the show notes. And if you're viewing this on YouTube, we'll have the information down below the video. Perfect. Thanks so much, Dave, for joining us today. And we look forward to checking out your books. Thanks for having me. It was a great conversation. Thanks. Have a great day. Thanks. Thank you for joining the Bookaholic Podcast. We appreciate your support. Remember to subscribe to the podcast. Follow us on Instagram at True Bookaholic. You can also email us at readingjunkie at book-a-holic.com. Don't forget to support your local library and independent bookstores.